All right, so yesterday we looked at trigonometry. There are six trig ratios, and we looked at the first three, sine, cosine, and tangent. We have our acronym that is SOHCAHTOA. you got to be able to spell it correctly in order for it to make any sense and be of any use for you, right? I have my Camp SOHCAHTOA shirt on today. Um, so, and I know this kind of looks like a G, but that's a C with my crazy A. Uh, make sure you can spell it right and understand how that helps you set this stuff up. Okay, we all look good on that? So, we're going to start here from yesterday. We did these ratios. And it said to do it as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth. But we didn't do the decimal part. Um, thousandth is how many decimal places? Three. Okay, something we got to know. So you can use your calculator. Do 12 divided by 13. And I want to know what that is to the nearest thousandth. 0.923. That is 0.923. Now, yesterday we looked at the fact that the sine of A and the cosine of B were the same, so that's also 0.923, and we don't have to talk about it again. All right, then what is 5 divided by 13? 0.385. So this is also 5 over 13, so that is 0.385. Tangent of A is 12 over 5, so what's 12 divided by 5? 2.4. Now, it's supposed to be to the nearest thousandth, so let's talk about what happens when you, because you literally get just 2.4. That's not three decimal places, but that's exactly what you get. Just like if I got an answer was 5 and it said to the nearest thousandth, I would still just put 5. It's only 2.4, that's what we put. Sometimes it, you might have an answer that's 2.400. I would only do that if my answer was like 2.4001387, blah, blah, blah. Because then the 00 after this would tell you that it's not exactly 2.4 and there's more stuff out there. Does that make sense to you? So you don't cram it on there just for the sake of making it 3 unless it's really there. All right, then 5 divided by 12, what's that? It is 5 divided by 12, 0.417. Okay, now if we just look at these six green decimals, um, if you play the Sesame Street game of one of these things is not like the other, which one kind of just looks like it doesn't belong? The 2.4, right? Because all the rest of these are less than 1, and then you get like 2.4. Kind of looks like maybe it's wrong. Do you think it's wrong? No, because the 12 over 5 and the 5 over 12 made sense, right? So even though that kind of looks like an outlier, it still makes sense. So let's just look at sine and cosine for a minute. Do you think sine and cosine, you could ever get a value that would be greater than 1 like this? Why not? Good, because the hypotenuse is the longest side. Uh, uh, sine and cosine both have the hypotenuse as the denominator, and the numerators are the opposite and the adjacent. So since the hypotenuse is always the longest side, that fraction will always be left less than 1. It's not possible to be greater than 1. Could you even get 1? No, because it's still greater, right? All right, so then look at tangent. So tangent, in this case, unless one of these will be greater than 1 and one is less than 1 every time, unless, because you just switch opposite and adjacent, unless the value is 1. Do you think you could have a value of 1 for tangent? What is the tangent what over what from Sokotoa? Opposite over adjacent. So what would the opposite, what would have to be happening with opposite and adjacent for us to get one? There has to be an isosceles triangle. They have to be the same. So if you have an isosceles right triangle, you have like 5, 5, 5 squared to 2, then opposite over adjacent would be 5 over 5. The value would be 1. Does that make sense? So unless it's an isosceles right triangle, one of them is greater than 1, the other one's less than 1, vice versa. Or you can't actually have 1 for a tangent. So if you ever get a sine or a cosine value that is greater than 1 or is 1, something's wrong somewhere. Rarely are we going to look at them as just pure decimals like this anyway, but that's still a concept that you need to have. What these values are, remember, we're not comparing two triangles to each other. We're comparing two sides and one triangle. So it's kind of like a scale factor, but not really. But if I have two triangles where I know that they have the same, both have the same angle value, whatever A happens to be, and I know that the cosine of A is 5 over 13. Well, if I have the adjacent side of the other triangle and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, I can set up a little proportion and solve it that way. Does that make sense to you? That's kind of what's happening here. We're not really setting them up that way, but that's how it works like with a similar triangle. 
So we don't even know what these angles are. We could find it, but we're not looking at angle stuff until tomorrow. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, these are the values. All of the values have, for all a infinite number of angles have already been calculated for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, yes. The homework that's due tomorrow that said just as fractions, because uh, that's all the instructions say, right? Did I mess up with the instructions? No, I'm just I'm double checking with you. Is that all it says? Because every now and then my instructions are. Okay, good. Because I did, there are times where I've had, I've given those problems and I've said to do both. That's why I want to double check my instructions are right. <laughs> but yes, no, I do not want you to go back and do the decimal honor. You're fine. Because really that doesn't tell us a whole lot. I, the only reason I went ahead and did it here is so we could kind of look at this. Because that's not as obvious with a fraction. But that's a very good question. Um, the infinite number of angles that are possible have already been calculated for you. That's not something that you can calculate easily anyway by hand or at your level unless they're, ex um, unless they're like special angles like these. So these require the use of a calculator, okay? Now I want you to look at your calculator, but I don't want you to touch anything yet. So on your calculator, um, you have the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, right? Which I know, even though you shouldn't be touching it right now, you've all pushed those buttons before to see what would happen. You get weird decimals, and you're like, I don't know what these are for, but I don't have to play around with it, right? Um, you do not need a graphing calculator to do what we're going to do. You need a scientific calculator, which means it can be a basic calculator with just these three buttons on it. There's usually a couple of other things, but it doesn't have to be crazy fancy. There are calculators where you have to type things in backwards. So for instance, um, if I want to take the square root of 17 on this calculator, I'm going to hit square root, 17, hit enter. On the calculator that came with my phone, you're touching the calculator. Put it down, Caleb. Um, on the calculator that came on my phone, if I want to take the square root of 17, I have to type in 17 and then hit square root. Does that make sense? So I'm done. Yeah, like the one that's built in. Or just well, some other calculator. Some calculators that aren't fancy calculators are like that. It depends. So that's what I mean by backwards. You have to determine if whatever calculator you're using, if it's not like this, whether or not you have to type things in backwards or not, and whether or not you're in the right mode. So that's why we're going to write down these three values in just a minute so you have something to check against with whatever you may be using which really could be exactly what you're using in class if you actually download it onto your tablet. Um, or you may have one, I know. But there are different ways to measure angles. Degrees are the only things that you understand, okay? One of the other ways to measure angles or the units for the angles is in radians. We talk about radians next semester. All you need to know about them right now is that you don't know what they are and you don't want to use them. So you have to make sure your calculator is not in radian mode. That is the default mode for most calculators. I can't give you a generic way to change the mode for all calculators because it's different depending on the calculator. If you can't figure out how to change it, bring it to me, bring me your phone, the calculator, whatever, I can usually figure it out. There's only been one phone that somebody brought me, I don't even know what it was, it's been a few years, that we could not figure out how to change the mode, but it didn't matter because it was in degrees anyway. So you can check it against this to make sure everything is right and that you're typing it in right. Um, when you clear the memory or the RAM on these calculators, it puts it back in radian mode. That's bad. If you don't check the mode every time that you start doing something on these calculators or any calculator, you could get every single question wrong, including on a test. Sometimes the radian answers are way off the wall and it is clear that something's wrong, like they're negative or they're huge or whatever. But sometimes they're not that far off and they're kind of reasonable, so you don't always catch yourself. So on your calculator, turn it on if it's not on. Next to the second key, there's a mode key. So you hit mode. Oops, I didn't turn the time back. Go down to the third row and arrow over to degree and hit enter so that it's now flashing on degree and radian isn't highlighted anymore. Okay, does that make sense? It's that easy to do. Are you in this screen? You go to, you go to degree and hit enter. Arrow down to the third row, arrow over to degree, hit enter. Okay, we all good on that? All right, so then you do second mode and you're out of it. Now you're in degree mode. So now the first thing it asks you for is the tangent of 11. So you just hit tangent, 11, hit enter. And you get this obscure decimal that doesn't make any sense to you. And I know because we rarely look at these as pure numbers. I mainly want you to have them so that you have something to check yourself against. So when I go to type or write this down as a decimal, that is 0.194. So if you type in tangent of 11 on whatever calculator you're using and you get 0.194, you're good because the radian value is like negative 225 something. It's huge and weird. Um, and you can also make sure you're typing it in the right order if it's something that's backwards. So go ahead and do the sine of 62 and the cosine of 30. What 
What's the sine of 62? 0.883. And the cosine of 30 is 0.866. Now, I want you to look up here. Remember that the sine of A is the same as the cosine of B, right? So the cosine of 30 should be the same as the sine of what? 60. Okay, this would be other acute angle. So the cosine of 30 should be the same as the cosine, I'm sorry, the cosine of 30 should be the same as the sine of 60. Look, we have the sine of 60 here, square root of 3 over 2, right? How do you get the calculator to give you a decimal into a fraction? Math enter, enter. So do that, math enter, enter. You can do that until your fingers bleed. It ain't going to change, okay? Because it's not going to change these trig values into fractions for you unless you happen to get 0.5 like this one, um, because these are irrational numbers. So it, that's not, it's not going to give you this exact value, but they should be the same. So let's type in the square root of 3 over 2 and see if it's the same as the 0.866. And as you're doing this, let me remind you that the calculator is only as accurate and intelligent as the person pushing the buttons, right? So if you're not matching, it's, it's giving you the answer you're asking for, but you're not asking for the right thing. Because when I do the square root of 3, if I just do divided by 2 right now, it's going to take the square root of 3 halves. Got to close my parentheses. Good. Close my parentheses and then divided by 2, and it's the same value. So the cosine of 30 and the sine of 60 are something that we can calculate because we understand special right triangles. We can get an exact answer. Um, but the calculator also gives me this decimal answer. Sine of 62, any, not anything that you're going to be capable of. But just remember that all this is is a ratio of the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse if the angle happens to be 62 degrees. It's that ratio. But all the work is already done for you. Okay, we all good so far? All right, now turn your cal calculator off, put it down. Don't touch it again until I tell you to, because we're not going to need it for just a second. This says using trigonometric ratios to find lengths. Today we are looking, we're finding side lengths. Tomorrow we're going to look at how to find angles with the trig stuff. So it says find each length, give answers in exact form, and round it to the nearest thousandth. Exact form is the form you don't like. It's the form that makes you look like a crazy person at the Home Depot, and it is the form that you don't even touch the calculator for. Okay, but you got to have it in exact form and then to the nearest decimal. It's super important that you understand the importance of that because that in itself can make you, cause you to get lots of wrong answers. In AP, the accuracy is important to the nearest thousandth. And if you don't keep things exact until the end and you round too soon, you, you, may, be, you may understand the concept and your value may be pretty darn close, but you might be off by one one thousandth and then you're wrong, okay? So accuracy, hugely important. So when I look at this triangle, I'm looking for each length. I'm looking for ST, so I'm going to call that X. We could leave it as ST. I suggest you make it a variable. Then on this triangle, I can't do Pythagorean theorem because I don't have two side lengths. Can't do special right triangles because it's not a special right triangle, which tells me I'm going to do trig. So when I go to do trig, i got to figure out what, which angle I'm using. Which angle am I using? The 42. See how easy that is? Like, that's how you decide. Now, could I... Am I capable of finding this value and then using that? Yes, but don't do that. I don't know why you'd even bother because it's more work, first of all. And honestly, probably every single person that has ever tried to do that has subtracted wrong and then got the wrong answer. Now, are we all capable of subtracting correctly? Yes. Are we all capable of making stupid mistakes on easy things? Yes, I'm the president of that club. Okay, I mean, it's, we're all capable of that. So don't, don't try to make things harder. This is your angle. So you mark it. And then you label your triangle. Across from that is your opposite side. This is your hypotenuse and adjacent. And I, I label mine in the exact same order every single time. I don't care what order you label them in, but I suggest that you are consistent with yourself. Don't sometimes do opposite first and sometimes do hypotenuse. If you're consistent every time, you're way more likely to not do something weird. Okay, so I do opposite because that's where my arrow is pointing. The hypotenuse is the next easiest because it's across from the right angle. Then the adjacent is the leftover one. And I do it in that order every time. Okay, All three sides every single time. You will get to a point, just like with special right triangles, where maybe you don't have to label as much. Um, but, you know, Some of you will get there faster than others. But at the beginning, everybody labels everything because you haven't been through all the possibilities of weird stuff yet. So we've got all this label. But I'm not using all three sides. Right? I'm looking for x, so clearly I have to use the adjacent. They gave me information here, so hypotenuse is important. 
they didn't give me anything on the opposite side and I'm not looking for anything there. So opposite, I don't need, so I'm going to exit out. But I still label it because you're less likely to put something in the wrong spot if they're all three there. Does that make sense? Now, the biggest question I get after all of this is, okay, uh, students will say, I get this. I can work these problems. I understand it. It's no big deal. But I don't understand how you know which trig ratio you're using. Okay? This is how we know. Because I'm not using the opposite. That has nothing to do with it. I'm using adjacent and hypotenuse. So I go back to my acronym, and I look at which one, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses adjacent and hypotenuse. Cosine. Here's my adjacent and hypotenuse, so cosine is the one I'm using here. Does that make sense? It's not like I get to use one and you get to use another. The only one that works here is cosine. Everybody okay with that? That's how you decide, based on the sides that you're using. So now I know, all right, I'm using cosine. So I'm going to take the cosine of what? 42, because it's always the sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle. That's equal to the adjacent, which is x. You don't have to put degrees in here. Over hypotenuse, which is 9.5. You don't have to put degrees in here, just like I'm not going to put inches on the 9.5. It doesn't make it wrong, but you don't have to. Because then sometimes you think it's a zero and things get bad. All right, everybody good so far? We're good on the setup. No big deal, right? Okay, so you have to always remind yourself from now until the end of time, you know, even when you're sitting in physics and you're thinking you're not doing math, but you're really doing math with a little bit of science sprinkled in, um, that your algebra steps never change, even when things get weird. Like when things got weird with the square roots, at first I wanted to do some weird stuff, but you don't. You don't change your rules because you have square roots. We're not changing our rules because we have words in the problem now, right? My goal is to get x by itself. So mathematically, I have to figure out what I need to do. This over here doesn't even matter. All I'm really looking at is this side over here. So what do I do to isolate x? Multiply by 9.5. So I multiply both sides by 9.5. Those cancel out. That's why I did it. So I get x equals 9.5 times the cosine of 42. I have x by itself. That is my exact answer. I know you kind of don't have a concept of that. It might get you kicked out of Home Depot, right? But that's okay. That is your exact answer because we haven't rounded anything. Now, even though that you don't have a great concept of, you should be able to tell me something about the length of ST before we go any farther. What do you mean go together? Mm -hmm. It's not wrong, it's just unnecessary. But yeah, but they're together. It's like an, it, that cosine of 42 all together represents some value. We don't know what it is and we don't care. That's why we're not touching the calculator. But it represents a number. Just like the square root of 17 represents some number. I don't know what it is. I mean, I could kind of have an, an estimate, but it doesn't matter. But I can't divide by 17 and leave a square root sign hanging out there. Like, that would make no sense, right? So just like here, if I divide by 42, I can't do that because I can't just leave the cosine hanging there because this operation is not multiplication. Does that make sense? So it's a value in itself. Um, what is something you can tell me about the length of st? Good. It's shorter than 9.5, right? Because 9.5 is the hypotenuse. So in the end, my answer should be less than 9.5. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's something. So if I get 12.6, something's wrong somewhere. What can you tell me just about the value of the cosine of 42? It's, more, it's less than 1. Whatever the cosine of 42 is, right? I don't expect you to be able to estimate it because you don't really know how to. That's fine. But it has to be less than 1. We've already decided that, right? And it has to be positive. So if you multiply 9.5 times something that's less than 1, aren't you going to get something that's less than 9.5? Right? So even if you didn't understand the hypotenuse thing, same thing. Those kind of things are important to recognize because that's reasonable to have an answer so that when you do get something off the wall, it catches your eye and you know to go check things. You with me on that? This is your exact answer. This is the exact length of ST. Right? That's one of the things that you're typing into Schoology. There's examples of how to type that in in the instructions that 98% of you don't read. All right, so then at this point, now that I have my exact answers, I'm going to go and you type that in exactly like you see it. Okay, I'm going to clear off my screen. And then 9.5 times the cosine of 42. Enter. Yeah, and so we're gonna, for this one time, I'm going to have you write down more than you actually need to. So 
x equals 7.05987 dot dot dot. Because we are rounding to how many decimal places? Three. The thousandth, which is three. So it has to be, it's going to be seven with three decimal places. You look at the number after the third one, so you look at the fourth one, to decide if you're going to round up. That's bigger than five, so nine becomes what? Ten. And that means that five becomes six. Does that make this become one? No, it absolutely does not, okay? You might need to go to like, some of you probably need to go to Khan Academy and look at rounding rules and stuff, but um, so that is, you get 7.06, do I put the zero here? Yes, because that tells me other stuff's out there. Right? That has inches on it, and that is the length of ST. And it's less than 9.5, so it makes sense. Okay, so this is your exact answer. This is your rounded answer, or actually it's your estimated answer. I mean, it's a pretty darn good estimation, but it's still estimated because we rounded. Okay? Everybody good? Any questions at this point? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So cosine, you're not going to take the cosine of a side length. It's always going to be of an angle measure, which might be a variable if we don't know what it is, but it represents an angle, whatever it is. Okay? Any questions? Anything else? So up at the top here, we write SOH, CAH, TOA. I am looking for the length of DF, so I'm going to call it X. Which angle are we using? 51, right? So then I label. This one I label as what? Opposite. What is X? Hypotenuse. And this is edges. So of those three that I just laid, and you put them all on there so you can take a second and just look at it and go, okay, those all make sense, right? Which one do we not need? Adjacent. Hypotenuse is what I'm looking for. Opposite is what they gave me. So those two are very important. Opposite and hypotenuse is which one? Sine. Here's opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm using sine. So I'm going to take the sine of what? 51. That's equal to the opposite, which is 17 over x. Now, this isn't set up exactly like the other one. I need to solve for x. Can I multiply both sides by 17? Yes. No, I mean, I can, but it's not going to help me. It just makes things worse, right? Um, can I divide both sides by 17? No. I can, but does it leave me with x on the right? No, it would leave me with 1 over x. So it doesn't still going to do me any good. But remember, your goal is to get x by itself. It may not happen in one step. Not every equation is a one-step equation. I would like to get it out of the denominator, though. So mathematically, what do I do to get it out of the denominator? Good. Multiply both sides by x. So those cancel out. That's why I did it. That leaves me with x times the sine of 51 equals 17. Remember, your goal is still to get x by itself, no matter how weird things look. The sine of 51 together just represents some number, right? Some decimal that's less than one. I don't care at all what it is. You're never going to write it down in the middle of a problem like this. So if I want to get x by itself, what do I do? Good. Divide by the sine of 51. Because those are together. They're, they're one thing. So then these cancel out. Again, that's why you did it. So that leaves you with x equals 17 divided by the sine of 51. That is your exact answer for the length of df. This is the one, or these type, ones that are set up like this are the ones where if you are having to type things backwards in your calculator, it can get a little confusing, and you definitely want to make sure you can get the right numbers out. Everybody good so far? Yes, sir. No, because that is that's the length of df. 17 x doesn't even have to be there. 17 divided by the sine of 51. That's not in terms of x. That's the that's that right here. That represents an actual value, a number that we don't know what it is because we haven't calculated it yet. But it is some number. Okay. So then type that into your calculator, and when you type that in, the length of df then as an estimated answer would be what? And that would be meters. And that's it. 
last period, somebody was like, oh, that can't be right. And I'm like, oh, never mind. Because at first they were thinking it has to be less than 17, but no, it's supposed to be more than 17, so I think we're good, right? But like, would 218 make sense? Probably not if this is 17. Like that seems a little weird depending based on the angles and stuff, but we all good so far? Uh-huh. Because this is op this is opposite over hypotenuse. It just depends on what's labeled over there. Does that make sense? All right, so now we're looking for the length of BC. So I'm going to put an X there. Go ahead and label your triangle with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. We all get that labeled. Now, which one do we not need? The hypotenuse. Good. So we have the opposite and the adjacent. Which trig ratio is that? Tangent. Okay, so we have the tangent of what? 18. Good. And that's opposite over adjacent, so that means that that's 12 over x. Okay. So then what do I do next? Good. I multiply both sides by x. So that leaves me with x times the tangent of 18 equals 12. Then what do I do? Good. Divide by the tangent of 18. So x equals oops, 12. Yeah, that would be bigger. 12 divided by the tangent of 18. That is my exact length for BC. Now I want to pause here for a second, and I want you to look at the exact answers of these two questions, where you started and where you ended up. Here's here where we started. We had sine of 51 on the left, x in the denominator. Then we had x on the left, sine of 51 in the denominator. Tangent of 18 on the left, x in the denominator. x on the left, tangent of 18 in the denominator. Do you see how they just changed places? It's not a coincidence, it's not magic, it's not a trick. Mathematically, that's going to happen every time because you are multiplying by one, the denominator, and then dividing something out. So what you're doing is forcing them to change places. So since it's not a trick or a coincidence or anything like that, it's mathematically sound, I'm fine with you skipping from here to here. Like, you don't have to do the math in there. If you want to, that's fine. Like, if it confuses you why you don't, I'm all good with that. But if you end up with x in the denominator, you can just have them switch places and we move on. Okay? Does that make sense to you? but only if it's in the denominator, okay? All right, so then when we type this one in, 12 divided by the tangent of 18, what do you get? Good. So x equals 36.932 feet, which is the length of BC. And I will say again, make sure you're not just writing down what other people are saying, that you're actually typing this in and can get this on your own as well. All right, JL, that's x whatever you want to call it. So go ahead and label your triangle. Which one of these do you not need? Adjacent. Good. So we're using opposite and hypotenuse. Which ratio is that? Sine. So it is the sine of 27 equals x over 13.6. Does anything switch places here? No. Don't start switching things because we did on the other one. Same algebra steps. So what do we do? Good. Multiply both sides by 13.6. So x equals 13.6 sine of 27. That is your exact answer for the length of JL. Yes. And cosine is also? I mean, it has more to it, but yeah. And then, um, so then when you type that in, what do we get for the length of JL? Good, 6.174 centimeters. Um, why do I only put centimeters on the rounded one? Basically because I forgot to do it on the other ones to begin with. <laughs> so I just didn't. And even um, even in Schoology, it says at the top, only put the units on the rounded one because that's accidentally how I did the notes and I didn't want to confuse people. Because honestly, 
You're not going to go into Home Depot with a 13.6 sign of 27. You know what I mean? I mean, you can, but <laughs> that's going to be like your homework over Christmas. Go see, what you, <laughs> go see if you can confuse them. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. I'd like to know what they say. All right. So then this says, a contractor is building a wheelchair ramp for a doorway that is 1.2 feet above the ground. To meet ADA guidelines, the ramp will make an angle of 4.8 degrees with the ground. Don't let the word problems, don't make more out of them than they are. They're not that bad. But you have to use some common sense when drawing pictures, okay? So a ramp, you should have an idea of what a ramp looks like. And um, because we're talking about how far it is off the ground, it's going to make a triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing my triangle. So then I have to decide on my triangle where the 1.2 feet above the ground goes. Well, to me, there's really only one place that makes sense. Would you agree? Like, this is your ground, so this is how much above the ground, so 1.2 feet. Then the other thing it tells you is that it's a 4.8 degree angle with the ground. Now, I will have students on problems like this label it here and then be confused as to why their answer is wrong. So then I'll say, tell me why you labeled it here. I'm like, I don't know. But does it make sense? I don't know. I'm so confused. Okay, you're confused because apparently you want to be confused because this is not this has nothing to do with the ground. I mean that that's not something that's complicated. I mean sometimes they're confusing, but this is the ground. This is the only angle with the ground, right? 4.8. Sometimes it's just some common sense. Sometimes they're more confusing, and I get that. But sometimes, I mean, give me a break. I, you can't convince me. And usually they're like, oh yeah, which tells me you didn't really think through it on your own. You just like put stuff and then decided you were confused. It's because it's not that bad. Now, we are looking for the horizontal distance, so we'll call that x, the length of the ramp, which we'll call y, and the perimeter. So in the end, the perimeter is going to be 1.2 plus x plus y. So let's go ahead and label our triangle. Clearly, that's my angle, right? This is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. This is the adjacent. Now, I don't really have anything to mark out, right? Because I'm going to use it all. But you can't use all three of them at the same time anyway. I'm going to start with X just because we normally start with X. So I'm going to start with X. Using Y doesn't make any sense because it won't help me. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to use X and this 1.2. So that's opposite and adjacent. Which ratio is that? Tangent. So the tangent of 4.8 is equal to the opposite, which is 1.2, over the adjacent, which is X. Everybody good at this point? Variables in the denominator. So can we take a shortcut? Yes. Well, I can take the shortcut and I can just switch them. So x equals 1.2 divided by the tangent of 4.8. Okay, so everybody needs to type that in their calculator. 1.2 divided by the tangent of 4.8. Now, this is one of my answers because it's the horizontal distance, right? But in the end, I also have to have the perimeter. And you can't round and then use a rounded answer. Never, ever, ever, amen. Okay? So, but I'm going to need this in the end for the perimeter. Even me writing down all the decimal places is still not legal because there's an infinite number more that are stored. I want the calculator to hang on to this for me. This is a skill that is so, so very important. Right above the on key, you see the STO button? You press that button, and it says ANS with an arrow. We're called an X, so I want to store it in X. So you use the same X that you do for graphing, ANS, arrow X, and then hit enter, and it has stored it in X. It is stored in there until you store something on top of it or clear the RAM. Does that make sense? Even when I clear my screen, if now I just hit X and hit enter, bam, it's the same answer. So it's going to hang on to that. It has an infinite number of decimals stored for me. Okay, now I'm also going to write it down. That was X equals, and it went away, I forgot, is it 14? What is it? Thank you. Wait, but I just want 14.290 feet. And what that is, that is the horizontal distance. I have to label my answer correctly. I mean, it's okay that it says X as long as you really clarify what it is. Everybody good at this point? Now, I also need Y because I need the length of the ramp. And in order to find Y, I could use X because I know what it is, but don't ever use an answer you found unless you have to. So I'm going to use this and this. So what's opposite in hypotenuse? Sine. So it's the sine of 4.8. It's OK if you correct yourself. That's equal to the opposite, which is 1.2, over the hypotenuse, which is y. 
then I can switch those places. So y equals 1.2 divided by the sine of 4.8. So in my calculator, 1.2 divided by the sine of 4.8, so that's 5, 8. And now you can store stuff in any letter. If you store it in X, you have now wiped out the other one. That's not a good thing. I'm going to store it, so my store key right here above on, and then my Y is above 1, so I have to do alpha 1 for Y and hit enter. And now that is stored in Y for me until I store something on top of it or clear it out. We all good? Okay. So now I've got Y equals 14 point, what is it? 345 okay. feet, and then I have to label what that is. That is the length of the ramp. Is that not right? I don't have to. 341. Oh, dang. Okay, I need to finish this. 341. I don't know where I'll get the title. Students, please be aware that if you are parking in the Okay, I still have a few minutes, so I'm going to yell over him. Just don't get your, to don't get your car towed. Okay, now that you have this, this is the beauty of all of this. I want the perimeter. This is literally what you type into your calculator. So I'll clear this off. 1.2 plus x plus alpha y. Bam. Then you have not rounded anything. Everything is exact until the very last minute. Does that make sense? We good? All right, are we good? I know. And he ruined it. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, good. I wanted to see when I really need to go to the bell, they come on with announcements way too early. If I finish a few minutes early. Yeah, the notes were green, but the homework yesterday was green too, and I didn't want that to confuse you more.